everyone, Sabrina here from Scrappy Tales Crafts and today I'm doing a 10 card one kit video part one using the January Simon Says Stamp card kit. Here I'm just showing you everything that comes in the kit. You get a Sizzix little tube of different embellishments. I think you get five jars and I use these for pretty much all of my cards today. You get some Rena K Neon Glitz Glitter Gel in a pink color two shimmery envelopes, a heart stencil, and then you get two stamp sets. You get one three by four truffle set, and then the large six by eight stamp set that has a lot of different sentiments and that cute little bear. You also get a pack of black card bases. You get three of them, and I will use them all for my 10 cards. And then you get a sampling of pattern paper. So here I'm just flipping through them. They are double-sided. And then you get some solid sheets of colored cardstock in blue, hot pink, light pink, and white. And I end up using those for my card bases today. And then of course you get the inspiration sheets, which I always look at. I always like to see what others do with the kits. So here I'm showing you that I went ahead and cut down all of the cardstock and scored them to create some different card bases. Most of them are A2, but I end up creating two slim lines. I did pre-plan my cards, um, so I knew exactly how many images to stamp and color. I do end up having a few extra truffles, but whenever I work with a kit and I know I'm about to make a bunch of cards with a particular stamp set, I do like to stamp, color, and die cut my images beforehand. That way I have a pool of images to pull from to create my 10 cards and I don't have to stop, stamp, color, and die cut. Um, it just helps me and the process go quicker. That being said, even though I pre-plan these cards, I a lot of the time will either underestimate or overestimate the amount of images that I need. So for the truffles, I had quite a bit left over. I probably just needed to do two or three of each truffle from that three by four stamp set. And then I actually needed an extra bear. So I actually was originally going to just do four bears and I ended up coloring five just in case, but I ended up actually needing six because I completely switched around three of my cards and did something totally different. So I would always recommend to stamp out a little bit more than what you think you need and use those extras on another project. So I did stamp out all of my images with a versifying onyx black ink. I clear heat embossed them on Bristol cardstock and now I'm coloring each image in with my zig markers. I just chose a variety of browns. I have the 72 pack and I think I used every brown that comes in that pack and I'm trying to create the look of milk chocolate, dark chocolate, and white chocolate. And then for my bears, I colored a few of them in like a tan color and then a few of them in a dark brown color. You can also do like a polar bear or a black bear, but personally, I am a crafter where if Christmas passes, I'm no longer doing any sort of winter cards. So I stuck with, you know, the more warm colored bears. For a lot of the chocolates, I'm just using one brown marker and then using my water brush, I blend the color out towards the edges to create a lighter shade. And that's normally how I color with my zigs. I like to add water to create either a mid-tone or even my highlight if I'm using three colors. And you'll see with the bear that I am going to use two or three markers to shade him. And then I always leave some white space showing to go over the entire image with my water brush. That's just going to help blend the colors together. And then it will also create that lightest shade. So I color much quicker with my zigs than I do with my Copics and because I clear heat emboss these images, that not only is preventing the ink from smearing because VersaFine is a slow drying ink, it also keeps my watercolor confined within the boundaries of the stamped image. I hope that makes sense. Because I use a water brush, sometimes the pigment will want to spread outside the lines, but the clear heat embossing kind of 
raises the stamped image up a little bit and creates a barrier for that water to stay within. So I love to clear heat emboss my images whenever I color with my zigs because I am a bit heavy handed with the water brush. So for this bear, you can see I'm using three shades of brown. I normally always start with my darkest shade, but I ended up wanting to make this bear have a little bit more contrast. So I pulled in a darker brown at the midway point, I guess. But then I went back over the dark color with the mid-tone and now I'm going over with the lightest marker. And then I'll create a fourth shade with my water brush when I blend all of the colors together. And I love the shading that you can get with these markers. So I decided to give this bear a black nose and pink ears, and then I'm going to color his heart in some different shades of red. Some of the bears, I left their hearts white because there is a heart image in the stamp set that says hugs and kisses, and you can ink it up with a colored ink and glue it on top of the bear's heart. So you don't have to color the one that he's holding. So I think, three out of the five bears I do color. Some of them I do this red combination and some I do like a hot pink color combo. So here are all of my bears and truffles die cut. Actually, I didn't die cut them, I fussy cut them. I think you can buy coordinating dies. If I see them, I will link them. But here, because I used a Wink of Stella pen, all of my images have a really pretty shimmer. So that went pretty fast. I am using some different heart dies in my stash. I used this large scallop heart to cut from a square card base to create a heart card base. And I overhung the heart at the top to create the actual fold. I cut that same heart again from craft card stock and then I die cut a slightly smaller solid heart from red card stock. So I'm taking my craft scalloped heart and I'm going to add a little bit of dimension to it with my Walnut Stain Distress Ink. And my idea for this card was to create a box of chocolates. So I think it would be even cuter if you made the front of the card like the front of the chocolate box. So you can do a little bow on the front. And then on the inside you can have the truffles, but I opted to just create the look of the inside of a box. So here I'm taking the solid red heart and I'm adding fired brick to the edges. You can hardly see the difference, but you can definitely tell in real life that this adds just a bit of dimension. So here's how those two hearts are going to layer. And then to create the slots for all of my chocolates, I'm just taking some thin strips of craft cardstock and I'm spacing them apart by adding the chocolates in between those thin strips of craft cardstock. And I'm going to create a grid with these strips. And I'm going to attach them down with my art glitter glue. And then I'll end up trimming these at the top and reusing them to create the grid that's going to go horizontally. So it was at this point I realized that I can only fit one truffle or chocolate. I don't know if these are truffles, but um, I can only fit one of them at the bottom of this heart. As you can see, there are two blank areas next to that chocolate at the bottom. So what I end up doing is cutting two of the chocolates in half and adding them to those areas. It wasn't ideal. I wish I could have fit two down there, but I made it work. So I finished up my grid and I did add three layers of white cardstock behind all of these chocolates to pop them up. You can use foam tape. I, for this video, used a combination of layering my white scraps and foam tape. I like both options, but I do like that I don't have to throw away my heavyweight cardstock that's like little tiny scraps. I can actually use them to pop little images like this up. So here's what I mean. I cut two of the chocolates in half. Again, I'll pop them up. Then that'll pretty much finish my first card. I do every once in a while like to create shaped cards. And this I think would be super cute to give to someone on Valentine's Day with a box of chocolates, like real chocolate. Here I'm trying to fill those empty areas and I debated 
whether or not to add more chocolates that I cut down, but I thought the areas were just too small. So I end up taking the really tiny sentiment stamps from the stamp set. I chose XOXO to go on that top right corner. And then at the very bottom, I think I chose you and me. And then over to the left, I'm going to white heat emboss the I fall in love with you more each day. I think that's what it says. I'm going to white heat emboss it on black cardstock. And it's a nice small sentiment, so it's going to fit nicely on that top left area. And that's pretty much going to be the sentiment on this card. And then I am going to pop up the heart with foam tape. And now that my panel is finished, I'm going to flip the craft heart around, add some ATG tape, and attach it to my white heart-shaped card base. And then that's pretty much going to complete the first card. I am going to embellish it with some of the sequins or confetti bits that came in the kit. I forgot to show in the beginning of the video that you also got a small bottle of glossy accents. I think I end up using one that's already in my stash because I have a bunch of those little tiny tubes of glossy accents that I never use, but I will end up using it in part two. So yeah, that is going to finish up card one. For card two, I wanted to use the stencil and that glitz gel that came in the kit. Now, I probably could have stretched the gel and made tops five cards with it. I was a little bit more generous because I like the dimension of these type of pastes. And I'm actually using a bone folder here. Would not recommend. It's not flat enough to really spread this around too well. But I end up figuring out and it ends up working. But yeah, I could have probably scraped a lot more of this stuff back into the jar and maybe got five panels out of it. And originally I was just going to do one. This is at the point where I decide to change up my plans. After I added the glitz gel onto this pink panel, I realized that I had some left and I'm like, I might as well just use this jar because it's a small sample jar and I've had these kind of pastes before. I've had the Gina K variety and I think this is probably from the same manufacturer. They dry up really fast here in Florida. So I just decided I'm gonna use this whole jar up. So I go ahead and stencil through with the gel onto some black cardstock. And this one I'm much more generous with because this paste is slightly transparent on the black. I wanted to make sure that this pink would stand out enough. So I left a pretty thick layer on this one and it ends up turning purple, which I really like how it ended up looking. I think out of the three panels, this one ended up being my favorite. And here you can see I'm not scraping anything off the stencil really. So I don't have very much paste left. So I'm just going to off camera do one more panel with white cardstock and I use up the rest of the gel. Like I said, if you used a thinner layer, you probably could have stretched it more and done five panels, but I think it's just like a sample size. But I enjoyed working with it and I was glad that I used it up because I know I probably would have never used it again because there's not much in the jar. And there is a lot of glitter, so I'm really happy with how these backgrounds turned out. Right now I'm working on all three cards simultaneously, so I am stamping out a whole bunch of sentiments. This one I'm stamping onto some stripe pattern paper. The first one I white heat embossed on a stitch rectangle. And then I stamped out another sentiment on... A pink oval die cut. I'm going to white heat emboss the oh hello there heart that fits perfectly in the little bear's heart. I will white heat emboss that. And then for the sentiments that I stamped with my Versafine ink, I'm going to clear heat emboss them. Here I'm just using a paintbrush to remove any excess powder. And here I'm bringing back those black sentiments and I'll clear heat emboss them. And I love the sentiments in this set. I have such a appreciation for typography or hand lettering. So Simon does this a lot in their stamp sets and I really love all the 
the sentiments that came in this kit. I feel like you're good to go. If you have this stamp set, you really don't need any more, I feel, for Valentine's Day. There's just such a nice variety. So I'm going to take that stripe pattern paper that came in the kit. I'm going to mat it on black cardstock. I did pop it up with foam tape. I'm going to glue down my sentiment to the top left corner of that pattern paper. And then I have my little bear here that I will glue to the right side. He is overhanging a bit, so I'm going to add foam tape in those areas. And then I will attach this black mat onto my glittered background. I tried to leave as much of it showing as possible. I could have die cut the center of it, but I just figured I'll leave it as is. To embellish this card, I'm just gonna take some pink pearls in my stash and scatter them around this striped paper, which by the way was my favorite pattern paper. I love a good black and white stripe. I also really liked the black and white polka dot, which I'll feature in card part two, but all three of these background panels are going to have a little bit of that striped paper. I went ahead and glued this panel onto one of the black card bases from the card kit, and that will complete card number two. For card three, I'm going to take that oval that I stamped. I chose being near you is the best. I thought about using another bear, but I really didn't want to cover too much of this background because like I said, this one was my favorite of the three. I love that the black turned the pink glitter into like a purple pink color. It's super pretty. So I decided to finish this card off, I would just go ahead and glue down a couple die cut hearts that I cut from the stripe pattern paper and finish this card off with a couple Trinity stamp um, gems. These are like iridescent, so they take on the color that's beneath them. So there's even more shine on this card that glitz gel has so much glitter in it and i just love how these three cards turned out and they were super simple um and i like that i was able to use up all of the gel and create some really quick backgrounds i'm going to pop up this oval with three layers of 110 pound white nina scraps And then that's just going to raise it up a bit. You're going to want to use a generous amount of glue because that glitter is a little bit difficult to stick um, anything on top of. So I am going to attach this panel onto a white card base and that's going to finish off card number four. I think this one is my favorite. By the way, a little shameless self promo, those little hearts I used are from Scrappy Tails and they're from the Assorted Hearts die set. So for my final background card, I had this striped pattern paper that I stamped out like love and adore you. I'm going to cut the bottom of it to create a banner. I also have a slightly larger pink strip that I also cut to a banner shape and that's just going to be matted behind to help it stand out. This one is definitely the most busiest because um, the white and pink are very contrasty on top of the black and white stripe, but it ends up looking pretty cool. Again, I will layer up the pattern banner with three layers of Nina cardstock and then I'll glue it onto my pink banner, and then I'll glue my pink banner to my heart card panel. Again, I added some glue just to make sure that it sticks well to that glitter. And then to finish off this card, I'm just going to take those same pink pearls and add them to the stripe banner. So these do have sticky on the back, but I do like to ensure that they stick down well with my art glitter glue. And then that's pretty much going to complete that final card. I kind of wish I matted it onto the dark pink card base that I created, but I ended up going with black. I like how both of them turned out, but now that I'm rewatching it, I kind of like the pink, just all pink which by the way is my favorite color. Pink and yellow I always go back and forth with, but this hot pink glitz gel is actually my favorite color pink in the world. I love like Barbie pink. So these three cards were 
super quick and easy. I love how they turned out. Let me know out of the three which one you like the best. I think that black one is my favorite. So for my final card, I wanted to create a slim line and I took inspiration color wise from the paper pad that came in the kit. So you can see here that I arranged all of the sentiments from the stamp set. I'm pretty sure I use all of them except some of the teeny tiny ones that are meant to stamp inside the candy heart, but pretty much all of them. And I'm just going to stamp them all onto the slimline panel with different colored inks. I will have them all listed below. Some of them are Hero Arts, some are Memento. I just tried to match the colors that were in the pattern paper. So I went with like an aqua color, pink or a hot pink, light pink, and then like a dark red. And I created this like, to me it looks like graffiti. And I love how this turned out. I think out of the five cards for part one, this one is my favorite. Actually, it might be my favorite out of all ten. I just love how this background turned out. So the light pink is Angel Pink by Memento. It's super light. It might be a little bit dry too. So I did double stamp all of the light pink um, images. But I just go back and forth. I try to disperse the color pretty evenly. I don't want two blues next to each other. And then I arranged all the sentiments before I started stamping. You guys saw that. And then I shifted them over to the right. I tried to keep them intact the way that I had them on this panel. So you can see as I stamp each of these sentiments, I'm constantly like putting the sentiments back on the panel to make sure I have enough room. And for some reason, this just ended up working out perfectly. Everything just fit within each other so nicely. I love that XOXO along the right side. So as I was stamping this panel towards the top, I was running out of the larger sentiments. So I am filling in some of that open area with the solid heart that came in the stamp set. I kind of wish I just reused some of those larger sentiments again. In my head, I felt like I had to use as many sentiments from the stamp set as I could, and I did not want to repeat any of the sentiments, but in reality, it probably would have filled the space better than, you know, stamping out these little hearts, but I still end up really liking how this turns out. This little candy heart is also in the stamp set, so I stamped that with the blue ink, and then I'll stamp Kiss Me in the center with the red ink. So I am now using those teeny tiny candy heart sentiments to fill in any extra areas. And then I'm pretty much done with this panel. So right here, I'm showing you this large hugs and kisses, which was the only sentiment large one that I didn't use on the background. So I definitely wanted my little bear to hold it. So I'm using the same exact inks that I used on the background and it just ended up looking too distracting. It completely distracted from the background. So I ended up going with a bear that has the already colored heart. I'm going to white heat emboss the oh hello there sentiment. And then he is just gonna go right at the bottom of this panel. And I'm going to use that heart that I stamped out earlier with the three inks that I used on the background for a card in part two. So I figured I'd leave that in. And I used all three inks to create like an ombre heart. I really do like how it turned out. It just was a little bit too distracting with this already super busy background. So just to fill in some more areas, I'm gonna use those Trinity Stamp gems again. And then I'll also scatter a couple of the teeny tiny heart sequins that came in the kit. And then that's going to complete this card. I love the colors. I always suggest taking inspiration from not only like other card makers, but also from pattern papers. So I'm going to pop up this bear with foam tape. And then I decided to mat this panel with dark red cardstock just to help it pop. I always opt whenever I do mats to go with a darker color because I really feel like it helps to draw the eye in towards the center. 
And then this does cover my entire card base, so I'm just gonna glue that right on top. So that is going to finish off my final card for part one. Part two should be posted hopefully by tomorrow. Hit that notification bell if you haven't yet already so you're notified when that video posts. And if you haven't yet already, please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment down below letting me know which card was your favorite. I love this kit. I will have it linked down below if it's still available. If not, I'll have the stamps listed separately. All right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Bye.